Eight reasons to run from antidepressants. Now before I start I'd like to point out that everything I'm presenting here has been published in scientific journals uh, and or has been reported on extensively in the media uh, through sources such as the BBC, ABC, USA Today, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, these kind of publications. So if you're interested in getting into the details of the eight reasons to run from antidepressants, I've provided links to all my research on the right hand side in the text box over there. So reason number one to run from antidepressants, they don't work. For most people it has been proven that uh, antidepressants do elevate your mood and make you feel better, but they don't make you feel any better than placebos, which are basically the equivalent of taking Flintstone vitamins for your depression. The evidence of this research was found to be so strong by the UK government that on February 27th, the government announced that it plans to spend 170 million pounds to train 3,600 psychologists because now they know that basically psychiatrists are not helpful when you want to cure your depression. So why are we finding this out just now when antidepressants have been out in the market for 15 or 20 years now? Well, the reason is reason number two, big pharma lies. Uh, what they do is, when they have good research results, they market that, they share it with psychiatrists, they promote these things, they put them in psychiatric journals, things like that. But when the research is negative, they just throw it in the garbage. So basically, they've got this new study out that has looked at all of the uh, research results that have been tossed or unpublished. And basically what they show is just about every major pharmaceutical company that promotes antidepressants, that has an antidepressant of some kind, is lying about the research. Number three, pharma ads really work. You are the victim of a very successful marketing campaign. And in fact, in the last 10 years, the diagnosis of bipolar disorder has increased 4,000%. And a big part of that is due to the marketing efforts of these uh, pharmaceutical companies. And studies also show that the more a pharmaceutical company advertises a antidepressant or other drug, the more you will specifically go to your psychiatrist and ask for it. And it should come as no surprise that if you ask for a specific drug from your psychiatrist, something that you've seen on TV, 82% of the time he'll give it to you. So because aggressive marketing has been so successful for, for the pharmaceuticals, what you see is an increase in ad spending every year for the last 10 years, the bar chart in red going up and up and up. Meanwhile, new drug approvals, which would be reflective of the research and development investment of pharmaceuticals, is declining. And finally, one thing you probably didn't know about the marketing of pharmaceutical companies is that there is a very good chance that your psychiatrist has some sort of undisclosed deal with one or more pharmaceuticals where they have agreed in some way to work for the pharmaceutical company, either through doing research or through promoting their drugs, which in effect it make the psychiatrist a little bit like a spokesman or a sales rep for the pharmaceutical company, except uh, they didn't bother to tell you that. In Minnesota alone, medical staff got over $57 million from Big Pharma between 1997 and 2005. Number four, antidepressants tend to have very harmful side effects, the worst of which are suicide, murder, and school shootings. This map shows all of the school shootings and stabbings which have happened in the United States between 1996 and 2006. It's been estimated that over 50% of school shootings involve antidepressants of some kind. And research shows that these antidepressants, which are supposed to prevent suicide, actually double the risk of suicide for those under 25 years of age. And number five, if you can believe it, after all these years of study and all these billions of dollars spent in research, psychiatrists still do not have a test to prove that you have a mental illness or a chemical imbalance or a bipolar disorder in any biological way. We have hunted for big, simple neurological explanations for psychiatric disorders and have not found them. Now who said that? Some sort of activist? No. Dr. Kenneth Kendler, Psychiatrist, Co-Editor-in-Chief, Psychological Medicine, 2005. Reason number six is getting off these things can be really difficult, especially because often it seems that when you try and get off the antidepressants, the feelings that you were trying to get rid of in the beginning, the reasons you took the drugs in the first place, come back even stronger. So we have reports of people feeling extremely suicidal or extremely violent, whereas before they weren't like that. 
Okay, number seven is a reason for optimism and hope for depressed people because uh, the New York Times reports that psychotherapy for as long as nine months is significantly more effective than short-term treatments for alleviating depression and is, of course, more effective than antidepressants. Personally, I think that anybody who's suffering from depression should be seeing some sort of therapist, but I also think that it's important to find the therapist that you feel comfortable with. And yeah, if he's got a degree from Harvard, that's great. But if he gives you a cold feeling and you start to look at him like you think he's the Antichrist, get out of that room. And finally, reason number eight is YouTubers really enjoy my How to Heal Depression video, which I think if you're depressed in any way, you should at least take a look at. Uh, a few people that I've shown it to that have been depressed in the past have looked at it and said, you know what, that's my life, and that was how I got out of my depression. And personally, it reflects how I was able to get out of three previous depressions in my life as well. Okay, that's it. There's your eight reasons. And just a word of warning, please, if you're going to come off your antidepressants, please come off them slowly, ideally under the supervision of a doctor, because those withdrawal symptoms can be really tough. That's it. Bye-bye.